Hello and welcome to News Click. The United States is planning to designate the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps as a foreign terrorist organization. The IRGC is a group which is part of the Iranian military which was formed after the 1979 revolution in order to protect the state from a possible coup by the regular military forces which served under the Shah. To talk more about this, we have with us Prashant. So, Prashant, firstly, what do you think is the motive behind this move? What is the US and Donald Trump trying to achieve by this? Right. So, like you said, the IRGC was formed immediately after the revolution in Iran, and it's about 125,000 strong. And it's not only a military force, it also runs its own commercial and business establishments also. So, on the one hand, there is, of course, the obvious fact that it's an escalation of the moves against Iran. We saw the two-part withdrawal of the two-part sanctions last year after the US withdrew from the nuclear deal. And this can be seen as one additional step in addition to all the saber rattling that's been happening for some time. But more important is also to note the fact that by declaring, say, the part of the Iranian security establishment as a terrorist, uh, established, terrorist establishment, so to speak, what uh, the US gets or what Donald Trump as president gets is the opportunity to declare war on Iran directly without having to go to Congress. Mm -hmm. This is because immediately after the September 11 attacks in 2001, uh, the U.S. Congress passed an act which allowed the president to basically declare war on any terrorist or, or what it called terrorist organization without having to go to Congress. Mm -hmm. So the president has those extraordinary powers. So in one sense, what this also means is that all these people who have been baying for blood for the past couple of years, we have John, Bol John Bolton, we have Mike Pence, we have Mike Pompeo, and all these people are very clearly pushing for war for a very long time. It's something even during the Bush, first Bush administration, something they tried to push. Mm -hmm. And after Donald Trump came to power, all these people have again come back trying to push the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we also need to see the uh, risk of uh, this situation actually emerging because uh, the, both Trump and all his establishment are very, are very clear that Iran is for them a fundamental enemy. And so what this actually does legally is to give the context, to give a pretext for the president to declare war on Iran without having to go to Congress and basically not having to go through all the scrutiny. So that's one of the key contexts for the, this decision actually. And uh, there were already some sort of sanctions and blacklisting on groups and entities associated with the IRGC. But with if these additional sanctions are placed on the entire group itself, what would be the practical implications of that for Iran and for the region as a whole? So it's, it's interesting because some observers have pointed out that this might actually even hurt US strategic interests. Because among the establishments which have links with the IRGC are also forces in Lebanon, forces in Iraq, which the US interacts with. So in that sense, it's actually, strategically speaking, a very blind move, so to speak. So we can analyze this as only something that is guided by this overwhelming desire to use force against Iran. On the other hand, Iran has responded, obviously, by declaring the US Central Command as a terrorist organization and the US as a state sponsor of terrorism. So this actually raises the pitch because there, you never know what happens and because now there are so many fields in which the US and the Iran both have presence in. For instance, a place like Syria, which the US has not withdrawn, although it's claimed it wants to withdraw. Mm. So that's one very good example where Iranian, for, where Iranian assi assistance is also there. Yeah. So how exactly does that work? So there's actually what this move by the US has done is to create a much more greater scope for conflict. And maybe that's what they're hoping for, some sort of provocation which then can be used as a reason as leverage to actually declare a full-fledged war. And as you can, as you know, all this has been uh, welcomed by all its neighboring re regional allies as well. Mm -hmm. And we see this as part of a tendency over the past couple of years involving all these countries, the US, Israel, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. to see Iran as right now the primary uh, enemy and the primary, say, what do you call it, the, the fulcrum of all opposition, so to speak. And some of the arguments they used are very laughable because they claim that Iran was involved in assisting Al-Qaeda. Yeah. which is completely nonsensical because Al-Qaeda almost sees Iran as much as a threat as some of the other countries. Mm -hmm. And any uh, the, uh, Iran has never supported Al-Qaeda at all. They were completely different, uh, what do you call it, in every sense of the term. So all this is basically just a pretext to sort of uh, create a warlike situation in today's temperatures to a point where maybe Iran mm -hmm. snaps mm -hmm. and then the U.S. can go all out and declare a war. And as you mentioned, there, was, there have been efforts to... Uh, sort of raise the, the pitch, to raise the pitch before, but it hasn't happened. So do you think the uh, uh, ongoing Israeli elections have anything to do with this? Right. In fact, Iran has responded saying that this was a gift to Netanyahu a day before the elections. 
And we also need to see the fact that there have been a number of such decisions because there was one, the shifting of the US Embassy. A mm. couple of weeks ago, there was a decision on the Jolan Heights. And now we have yet another decision like this, which again, uh, perfectly works into Netanyahu's campaign. And Netanyahu has been one of the leaders of this whole campaign to brand Iran as a terrorist country. In fact, if you remember, he gave this presentation, which was then it turned out to be an old one, yeah. in which he declared that Iran was uh, indulging in nuclear uh, exercises again. So in that sense, it's actually a very uh, calculated move also ahead of the elections to give Netanyahu some more of a uh, boost, because right now it's very important for the US and this specific Trump administration that Netanyahu return to power so that uh, so their plans in that region with respect to Syria, with respect to Palestine, with respect to even Saudi Arabia for that matter, all of these actually be, uh, all of these work out in the way they would like. So, thank you for, Shant, for joining us today and thank you for watching News Click.